How's it going, guys? Dave from Revocation here, Guitar World. Um, today's lesson is going to be about odd time meters, um, utilizing odd meter to write some riffs, um, and also using 4 4 and combining it with odd time meter to get some different combinations. So here we go. So this riff is from our song Madness Opus, and it's using this shape that's on the 13th fret of the low E string. I'm going 13, open E, 13, up a tritone to the uh, 14th fret of my A string, then back down to my 13th fret, pull off, jump up to the 18th fret on my D string and then back down to the E, and then pull off. And that phrase just keeps cycling in three. Then I take this shape and just move it down a minor third for the very last time. So the whole thing is in this kind of weird 3-4 you know, feel, odd time feeling. but it goes through in a cycle of four. So three times here, and then on the, the fourth time, I play it there. Um, once this riff cycles a few times, I bring it up. So one guitar is playing this now. So I'm just basically harmonizing it in minor thirds. You know, one guitar is still playing the lower version, and then... The other guitar is harmonizing it, which gives it a little bit more uh, you know, dissonance. It just makes it sound that much more like alien and weird sounding, which I like to do a lot in my riffs. You know, harmonize things in uh, you know, different intervals. Minor thirds are good ones to get a really kind of odd sound for an odd time meter. This riff comes from a song called Scorched Earth Policy, and it's a riff in 5-4, but really you kind of feel it like 5-4 double time, because uh, it's so fast. Um, and what I'm basically doing is, it's got some hammer-ons with open strings. I'm using a hammer-on on the open E string, and also a hammer-on going from the open D string. And then on the very last turnaround, I'm also hammering on the B string, so there's uh, some string skipping involved as well. So it's odd time meter with these odd shapes. <laughs> So, I'm palm muting here on the lower strings, and then on the open D string, I'm letting that ring out, so it creates some contrast between the palm muting and that open hammer on on the D string. Starting off with like a, a G9 with a flat 5, and then it's like an A, just regular. 9 chord, power chord with a 9 on top, and then again back to like B, flat 5, but it's with a 9. And then I'm hammering on 6th fret on the, the high B string. So the cool part about this riff is at the end of it, it flips around to 4-4. Four, four. And I'm also ringing this chord out, which is basically like a B minor flat 5 with a 9. 
So it has open D here, and then six, six on B and B string. Which just is really, really tense, um, and I just like the way those notes sound ringing out together. Especially because, you know, before that, each riff, um, each note in this riff, um, you know, is, is uh, separated. So here, having them ring out together just adds some further contrast to the part. This next example um, is a riff that's in 4-4, and then I make it in 3-4. Um, you can find these riffs in a song called Witch Trials off our new record. So here we go. This riff is an A natural minor. Starting with the perfect fourth here, and I'm going down to a perfect fifth, then up to an augmented fifth, and then I repeat that phrase, and then instead of going up to the augmented fifth again, I'm just doing this single note line on the G string, seventh fret to the fifth fret. And that repeats again. And the ending is basically just going down like a G major to like a C9 shape, but all with trem picking. Now when it goes to 3-4, it's essentially the same thing, but I'm just feeling it a little bit differently. So when I go up to here, I'm going down to a perfect fifth instead of going that single, single string line. I'm incorporating the D and G string. So I got fourth, fifth, I meant to fifth, then back to perfect fifth. Uh, when the three, four uh, part of the riff cycles uh, at the halfway point, I actually open it up and no longer do the trend picking, but I start playing it more with some slides to give a different characteristic. And what I'm also doing here is I'm harmonizing it. And the harmony is... Um, just to add some more flavor to the part. So when I'm writing songs, uh, you know, I like to take a riff and try and play it in different time signatures to see what I can get out of it. Um, I think it's really good for a songwriting um, aspect. You know, you're not just going from one riff to another that have no relationship to each other. Um, sometimes that's fine, but sometimes it feels more like a composed song. If you can bring back different themes, but just have a little twist on them. Um, that way it just, it keeps the listener engaged and gives them something a little bit familiar, but at the same time takes that riff to, uh, to new territory. Um, that's something I like to play around with a lot.